come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination we hope that you will help us in that goal by hitting that like or subscribe button wherever you found us because all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you uh hey we want to pay it back also right now this week you can go onto our social medias and you can suggest movies that we will watch in january of 2021 as part of our viewers choice month uh you can suggest like two movies yeah <laughs> i don't want to put that out there right now this is after Preferably. a week of our facebook being like um, you should watch them all Preferably <laughs> movies that we have not already covered as well and we're gonna we're gonna put this up for to you for a vote next week so next week you check back and uh, you're gonna be able to vote on a couple of them we're gonna watch the ones that get the uh, most votes and of course we get to do any kind of we're reserving the right to do any tiebreakers but uh where can they find us they can find this on facebook facebook.com slash saturday freak show go on over to our twitter at sat freak show uh you can email your suggestions to us Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And you can find it also on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight, your guide for tonight's movie is... Sean. Colin. <laughs> this is Sean, Colin, you're all trying to, tonight. <laughs> Colin's trying to push this off on one person. This as is much deflecting. As <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, I created the show, but at a certain point, I'm not responsible for my creation. <laughs> uh, tonight, we watched a movie called Blood Beat. Do well, I have a design? feeling? Oh, yeah. What? I have a feeling Sean's going to push off responsibility for this, too. So Probably. I mean, well, I'm the only one who made. I'm the only one who made decisions on here. Oh, give me, give me. Uh, the director is I his fucking well, name. Do you know the year? Fa- it's Fabrice Ange Zafratos. Zafratos. Oh, fancy. I, it is. We're, he's going to be Fabrice from now on. Are we? Are we familiar with Fabrice's work previously? <laughs> uh, you are because you just watched it. <laughs> <laughs> one movie it. and out. One got. movie it is. He has got one director credit. Shocking. Was this his thesis? Was this his student thesis in in school? Uh, I mean, no. This was a a drug fueled. This was a drug fueled romance story, Holly. You know, honestly, Holly, I, Holly, I honestly feel like that's a little insulting. This student film. I feel like I've seen some student films more cohesive than this. I mean, yeah, uh, I've seen some really bad students. I've, I've seen some pretty bad ones, but that, I mean, there's a scene in the middle of this where the two adults are in the painting room just yelling at each other. And that is it's got to be verbatim. Those things that <laughs> film students, I was a film student, so I'm making fun of yeah, everybody at this point. But it's one of those things. The film students are just like, yeah, man, this is like they're in this room and they're arguing, but it means so much more. Like it's that exact scene that all film uh, yeah, filmmakers so- want to do. The whole movie, Which is horrible. I was like the whole movie, I was like film student vibes, and then that scene, I was like, "That's it. That's that the was, scene." Yeah, that one hurts. Yeah. Like I, I couldn't yeah. watch it. I'm like, oh, I've been, I've been, I've seen that before. <laughs> but like student film directors, see, here's the thing. Like you said, it was a drug fueled thing. Do we know uh, what his drug of choice is? What uh, gave us? Uh, I think it's cocaine, Colin. Good old cocaine. Cocaine gave him the I'm uh, pretty inner, sure the cocaine inner, a, a, a voice yeah. or whatever to, to to try and get his. Uh, uh, to, subconscious his inner samurai yeah get <laughs> inner samurai i would have thought something more hallucinogenic yeah i mean i think so like i i mean you know i they got high uh, yeah this feels like a ketamine hole into. if i've ever seen one <laughs> but this, this is like, like it's, this is LSD. one of those things where like the the director has like we may be completely be- bewildered by the uh result but the director is one of those guys who goes in you know psychedelics or whatever he's got going on and he's like this is my masterwork right this is they're totally going to get what this means uh, and so uh, yeah we this have to sit there that- and try and decipher it and if we do we like we earn some kind of prize right 
Because he's is listening far too to this. Boring of a movie to be inspired by psychedelics. If this is psychedelics, <laughs> there'd be a lot more shit happening. That's far true. too dull to be. There's, yeah. sam- there's samurai warriors that glow with like some kind of uh, electric uh, spark, and people shoot the last shit out of there. Minutes. Yeah, that's um, it. This yeah, is a it's Christmas a little, movie. It's too little, too late in this movie. And it's a Christmas movie because the Saturday Night Freak it Show is. will not let you down. Uh, we've got a Christmas pick here. So you can we'll celebrate let you down the in some ways, but not others. What year was this movie made? Uh, 1983. Okay. The magic year, Colin. That's right. The supposed wonderful year. This is a good case against it, but here we are. Um, not all winners. The movie yeah. uh, also... Like, I, I went back and looked it up because, of course, you know, you said Blood Beat, and I know that it's uh, currently on Shudder, which is where I watched it. But uh, mm-hmm. I was like, Dah. you know, because, I mean, I was I watched, like, everything that came out. You know, I worked at a video store. I saw everything. So I went back, and I'm like, did this movie come out? And I did find a Trans World America Entertainment or Trans World Entertainment video box cover of Blood Beat. Ooh. So I can confirm that it was released on these shores in the year 19, well, at least I don't know if it actually came out in 83. It was filmed in 83. At some point, it, it got here. Yeah. Um, good. Filmed in the wilds of uh, Wisconsin. Uh, good old Wisconsin. <laughs> uh, uh, hop, step, and a jump away from us. Yeah, isn't well, it just Wisconsin. west of, it's west of Madison. Is it Sugar Grove? Oh, really? I think so, yeah. Yeah, Sugar Grove, that sounds Wisconsin. About right. Uh, you'll know the area because whenever you uh, go there, I mean, it's like kind of when you cross the border, Wisconsin's a magical land. When you cross the border into Wisconsin, uh, there's no, it's not fire. No, no, no. You haven't heard the the sound of the chanting Gregorian chant and the classical music that just kind of emanates from the trees, comes up out of the ground, pile, piles down on you from the sky when you walk in, when you cross into Wisconsin. I mean, this movie mm-hmm. accurately represents this. Because there's classical music like wall to wall in this movie. That's very true. Yeah. yeah. Didn't you didn't you know that the state song of Wisconsin is O Fortuna? Yeah. By Carl Orff. Yeah. yeah. Carmina Burana Burana or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. You're really just saying cheese and brats in Italian though. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Um all right. So uh, I mean it felt like Wisconsin. Like that's uh yeah. It did. Yeah. Oh yeah, like the first fifteen minutes, I was like, "This is like my family's <laughs> right. wall." Like, this feels yeah. right. First fifteen minutes, I'm like, "This feels depressing." Um, I'm feeling it. <laughs> the the bleak winter landscape of Wisconsin. Uh, a lot less snow than we would have expect for uh, for Christmas in this movie. Um, all right, so um, Sean, I mean. You know, I know that it's our job to sit here and kind of like analyze and, and figure out what's going on in this movie. Um, sure. It, it hurt my brain. I got to tell you, just, you know, coming fresh off of watching it. So why don't you tell right, us what right, this right. movie's about? Uh, I, I'll i try, Colin. Um, <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, here we go. From, from what I gathered, um, uh, uh, a son brings his girlfriend home to meet his mom. Boom. Synopsis. Yeah. Right there. Uh, at some point she becomes possessed by the ghost of a samurai, the daughter, the, uh, the son's girlfriend, the son, oh, yeah, Sarah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Sarah uh, okay. becomes, uh, yes. I mean, wait, uh, we, wait, wait, the audience is uh, saying, wait, what possessed by the ghost of a samurai. I They're said making the same, the same thing, exact right? jump that we had to make yeah. because if it's you, that quick. If you have further questions about the samurai, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, people, that really is as far as our knowledge of why it's a samurai. Um, I, that's as far as it goes. It is a samurai. I yeah. can't tell you why. There's apparently um, a director's commentary on the Blu-ray that Vinegar Syndrome put out for this. I have not listened to it. Spoiler, I'm not going to listen to it. So uh, we may never know where the samurai idea. I don't believe Again, you, Sean. <laughs> Sean, I don't think there's ever been a director's commentary you've been able to turn down. <laughs> uh, it's going to be this one. Yeah, you'd have to buy it first. Uh, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. the the most obvious uh, go-to reason is because somebody in the, the cast, crew, or production had a fucking had samurai armor yep. set that they had easy access to and said... Right. 
we got to make a movie using that armor. And right. some people get an animatronic T Rex. Some people get samurai. Exactly. <laughs> that is exactly. Not right. all movies are created equal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but man, this makes Tammy and the T Rex look Oscar worthy. Man, they at least had like a discernible plot. At least it's supporting true. actor Oscar worthy, I would say. Mm-hmm. When we say discernible plot, I mean it is. Uh, yeah, you're we're pulling teeth here to it's, try and it's threadbare. Okay, yeah. so the why why is this samurai attacking this uh, family? Well, first, when the uh, when all the kids first arrive, um, the mother is something of a. It's a better word than fucking weirdo. Uh, she's like a I'm, psychic. I'm coming up short. Well, she's she's, like, a, she's a psychic artist. Well, let's talk she's, about um, this woman. She's right? like spiritually sensitive. Yeah, yes. I would say she looks like a cross between um, Shelley Duvall. And the actor Anthony James. Anthony James was the uh, the brothel owner in Unforgiven. You remember him? <laughs> I think he was the barber uh, in that. High Plains Drifter. He's like got a pockmarked face. Oh, I have to. We got a Anthony uh, James. Okay. I mean, like when I was looking Sounds at her, I'm like, you put a wig on Anthony James, and that's that's you know that's him. Um, right. and she's a poncho wearing, so it's like okay, she's like former hippie or something, uh, flower that's child. She does have one outfit. That's right. right. Short she does have one thing. outfit for the entire movie. And she's just an odd bird uh, when we meet her, right? Like we meet her right off the bat and there's like a domestic drama going that's taking place between her and the hunter, Gary. Um, right. Where he wants to get married and she's like, no, I'm never getting married again. And this puts their relationship on the rocks. And the whole way through the movie, I'm like, are we going to resolve this? I'm gonna tell them I'm gonna marry their mama. <laughs> yeah, she's like, no, I hate you. She's got a this migraine a, that comes on. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say in a movie where we don't know what's coming next, as we did tonight, this was a very, very weird scene. The migraine scene, or the, the, the migraine I'm not gonna marry you the, scene. Uh, it's. Well, I mean, they're all oh, right. She has the. You got a migraine again? Oh, this is so fucking weird. Yeah, because he brings home. Oh, oh he, we're introduced to him first. The deer he's out right. hunting, and he bags a deer and he brings it home and like, come out here and check this out. It's so awesome! And she's like, I can't, I can't, I can't. She has to, you know, you got a migraine again. Goes inside, then he proposes to her. This is not going to work. I can't like try and describe what? beat by beat what happens in this movie because none of it makes Ugh. any sense and none of it is ever what dealt with again. Time to pr- I mean, what better time to propose than in the middle of a migraine when you're stringing a deer up to a tree? I mean, it's magical, right? Good time, right? To Wisconsin. That's how things are done in Wisconsin. Yeah. I mean, Holly, someone did propose at a Culver's in Wisconsin recently. It's not outside the realm of possibility up there. That's what I'm saying. Wisconsin. Did he hide the ring in a curd? No, he had the like sign change. The digital sign at Culver's changed to like, will you marry me? And like, was it oh, out in front of the Culver? sign? Oh, man, I give that marriage five years. What'd you say, Holly? Was it at the world's largest Culver's? No, I don't think so. Oh, because I am not even at the Is world's that in Wisconsin? largest Culver's. That's yep. not, yeah, it's not far from yeah. here. Oh, okay. Drive by it on 90. Culver's is, where- is the home of Wisconsin. It, yeah. So Culver's comes from Wisconsin. Well, I mean, you would because cheese curds, right? Butter burgers. Yep. Oh, yeah. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Uh, <laughs> Everyone smile so we can do the ding. Hey. Yeah. Mm, Wisconsin. A frozen barren landscape of uh, dairy cows. No, we're kidding. Uh, the, um, so, yeah, we instantly then bring in the, uh, you know, the son, his girlfriend, uh, I believe Gary's daughter, Debbie, Dawn, whatever, also Dolly. arrives. Oh, Dolly. Dolly also Dolly. arrives. How do you forget Dolly? Yeah. Uh, what's the, the, the girlfriend's name? Sarah. Sarah. Okay. So this is, we're setting up some kind of dynamic here. Like when these two meet, the mom and Sarah, they trade each other with death stares. Or more like mom stares at Sarah. And I don't recall there being the crazy, uh, you know, uh, color change flash. No, but we get the, we get the weird, like springy sound effects. Like, wow, 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 wow. Mystical like boinging is the mystical closed boinging. Uh, <laughs> Yes, that is how we need to describe every interaction based mm-hmm. on based on the uh, captions. There's of some this movie. I think that'll be accurate on screen mystical boinging taking place later in this movie. Oh shit! Get, um, uh, Bravo. 
Well, I guess not long after they get there, there starts to be some sort of like mental like overlap. Like someone they're seeing visions, but you don't know whose visions they're seeing. It's very shining like. I don't know what's it was very confusing. All right, maybe we can do this. Who's the who's the protagonist of this movie? I am looking at a a, a panel of people <laughs> screwing up their faces, going. Um, no uh, idea, Colin. Just okay. You know, Colin, it's whoever you want it to be. Well, that's not. But that's not. Well, how it movies starts work. as it's it's it Gary's as story. Sarah. It starts as Sarah, and then it goes to the mom. Yeah, it's like Gary, then the mom, then Sarah. And yeah. then it's one. It's either the mom or Sarah at the end. I think. And then I and then Dolly at the end with the brother. Mm. Well, they team who's, up. Whose side were you on in World War Two? That will that will decide. There's also that. <laughs> there's that <laughs> angle which I did not think we were going there. Stock footage and all. <laughs> so, very surprising. I okay. did not see that coming. Uh, well, let me ask you this because I was uh, I was. Uh, this is what made me think. Uh, about that because basically you know as you're sitting there trying to go for mo- mo- any kind of motive at all just give me something i have no idea what the fuck is happening minute to minute in this movie and there's uh, a mystical boinging that takes place i mean the like you know actual physical version of the the mystical boinging but the uh where there's this light that the director takes these shots of this little is it a buddha statue no not buddha what would it be it's like some kind of japanese statuary and i was like oh this is you know and that's where i was like you know what the fuck is the samurai doing here i'm like well where'd that come from like this is going to be like revenge for the japanese killed in world war ii taking it out on this family in wisconsin and sure enough that's what's actually going on. The samurai explains to us. So I was trying to remember, maybe you can help me with this early in the movie. When Sarah arrives, doesn't she single out that little statue and say, make some kind of comment about it, which may be the linchpin to understanding this, this movie, like where it came from or how mom got these, you know, where it, something. I know they kept showing it, but I, I missed. Oh, it. she, she it. was messing with the tree. And she said, these are, what are all these? And one of them drops on the floor and he's like, all oh, these are old traditions that mom puts out and everything. And then he, he puts something back up on the shelf. I didn't see if it was a samurai. Mm. Ooh, I don't think it was I'll a bet samurai. it was part of it though. Yeah. No, they're, um, they're, they're sitting Buddha. So it's not the traditional Buddha with the belly. A sitting Buddha is like a slender fit uh, person. Oh, not fat Buddha. Okay. Cause Buddha yeah, changes a lot. <laughs> well, there you go. Okay. So, um, Although I struggle to recall, I don't believe that Buddha Buddha is an Indian. Okay, right? Not not Japanese. Could be wrong. Uh, so um, <laughs> mm, confused faces all around. Yeah, we're not. Gonna, I don't think we'll get in. I don't think we'll get into the religions of the world in this podcast. That is not going to be our. Yeah, I, I I'm not a religion expert, so no, not even going to pretend to know. So no, so I don't know who they're offending in this movie with all this shit that's going on. <laughs> Well, this movie, uh, then, you know, it starts to do, well, I was going to say starts to do weird stuff. We're already, it's already like, <laughs> I mean, we get the nice Gothic monk music, which every time I heard it, the only thing I could think of was Ace Ventura two. Yeah. It was like, all <laughs> right. Then. That's all I could think of. It's, it's that, that monk chanting music. Yeah. The sound of Wisconsin <laughs> from now on. will it truly is be known as the sound of Wisconsin. Yeah. She, the, this, this weird artsy religious mom is not, she's not your typical rural Wisconsinite. No, cause she's not a painter. No, that's how I imagine most of them. <laughs> she's a painter who paints these weird abstract paintings that hang in the walls of the house that, that have an effect on Sarah. Sarah is deeply disturbed buy these paintings and has to get them moved out of the bedroom that they get set up in. Um, the mom's kind of, kind of using the, uh, I think she's using the paintings to psychically spy on everyone. Like that's why yeah, they're in every room. Cause she way. can link to the painting and then watch you in your room. Okay. Did we explain, did we explain this? You know, right. The psychic, uh, phenomena that, that that's going on. Cause at some point somebody Nothing. asks mom, like, how did you know that moms just know everything? Uh, Cause she buys a present for Dolly. Sarah. Or Sarah. Sarah. How'd you know Sarah was coming? And she's like, Sarah, there's something about her. I've met her somewhere before. Never explained. 
never comes back to again. Doesn't make a goddamn bit of sense. Uh, nope. <laughs> nope. Just establishes a psychic link, and uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So the the kids all go out hunting. This is the next big centerpiece moment in our movie. The kids go out hunting in the woods, and Sarah has an ethical uh, dilemma because everybody all everybody else is drawing their bows and their shotguns and they're seeing these deer running around and uh, Sarah you know, this is big crescendo as it builds up to like she's watching and she just can't let it happen and so she screams and fucks up everybody's shots and gets them all pissed at her then she runs off through the woods and she runs into a man minutes. who has his guts falling out and okay so who killed that guy yeah who killed that guy yeah good question <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> you know what? I think it's a. Uh, you guys can decide who killed him. It could it be? Wouldn't it be? <laughs> wouldn't it be funny if it, if it was just like he just got attacked by a bear? No, he like, got attacked it. by the demon <laughs> samurai. We just Obviously, didn't get to, yeah. Colin. <laughs> we just didn't get to see it. <laughs> it would yeah. just be funnier if so, we had a movie with a samurai well, that was killing people, and this guy just got killed by a bear. But well, I mean, Colin, has the like suit been activated at this point? I don't think so. It has. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, explain okay, to me so- suit activation. <laughs> She finds um, a chest with a samurai suit and she takes it out and touches it. And then that's when the samurai starts appearing. But we find we find out that that's that chest didn't even ex- exist in the house. Right. It chest hasn't been, been here for 40 so, years. So <laughs> there's a, there's a samurai <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, OK, uh, obviously no one gives a shit. We're going to spoil the shit, the shit out of this. So the first person that comes across this injured hunter is Sarah. We know that later on Sarah is possessed by the samurai. So are we to assume that she actually kills him in that moment and we just don't see that happen? <sighs> wow, this is, this is I know. I know. Thank you, Holly. Yeah. Thank you for I like you Thank the you. way that you're seriously. You. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. I can't. I can't. Handle it. I can't do this. Uh, the no. I I think that. Uh, because there's a scene, I think we have to watch like wherever there's that orange flash frame where it gives you like one of those inverted uh, color dealios that happens yes. every once in a while. That is somehow, vision. yeah, um, because I Samurai believe that vision. happens somewhere around the, that time. That is somehow the, uh, that's her link to the thing. See, I don't even know if the thing is, uh, is it her? This is the other thing. You sit there going like, well, is it actually a ghost? Is it her? Uh, like id or you know out there operating on its own it's like is she actually the killer samurai uh, because yep. the movie does make a case for that also until it explicitly says like i am you know but the flashback uh footage to world war ii it's like this is revenge for world war ii but other than that it ties them <laughs> together because uh we have scenes where sarah alone in her bed is writhing orgasmically and uh, it, looks, it didn't look like she was masturbating, except maybe with the sheet. And this is intercut with the samurai. We don't see him yet, but wandering around, stabbing people with his long sword. Um, yes. And then she Holly, did, has an orgasm. Holly, <laughs> did this remind you of a, of a scene in a movie we have watched recently? Which one? <laughs> Uh, you'll you'll find out on our end of the year episode, I'm sure. Yeah, okay. We watched a movie recently that had a very similar scene that also made zero sense. So yes, it was a theme very true. Really. Yeah. Very true. Stay tuned well, hey, maybe I want this on my list. Share. <laughs> I'll tell you later, Sean. You just gotta go okay. exploring, Sean. You gotta see them all. Stay um, tuned for our end of year. <laughs> Yeah, so she is connected psychically, and uh, yes. you know, so basically, this is some kind of like uh, you know. That's right. I was like, is it her? Like she's having some kind of, it's a, it's a, the sensitive story of a young woman's sexual awakening by exploring her identity as a samurai By ghost warrior. samurai. Yeah. Uh, who's out there stabbing dudes through the midsection. You just, you just wrote the uh, lifetime blurb for this movie. Yeah. I keep going back to Seinfeld, right? That's uh, the young girl's <laughs> the sexual awakening. Milan to Minsk. Uh, Milan to Minsk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Raquel, Raquel or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't see there being an episode Rochelle, of Rochelle. Rochelle, Samurai Rochelle. on Seinfeld. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, okay. I, I have a question. I don't know if I ever actually uh, got this when we were watching it. They kept showing photos and flashbacks of a little girl 
who was that supposed to be? Okay, this is I'm 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 all ears for this. Okay, so I'm not the only one confused by this. No, because we oh, see like oh. right at the beginning when Sarah goes into I think, but because the way the movie is shot, it's like the the director doesn't know how to stage this or put it together, and they don't know how to edit it. Mom is taking Sarah into the guest room. And someone, well, we don't know which one of them does it. I suppose we could go back and look at the costume on the hand or, you know, the sleeve puts a candle over a photo of a little girl on a desk. Right. I Later. The, uh, I thought that um, what's the son's name? The boyfriend. Did, did he do it? I thought he did it. He put the candle. Ted. On so the Ted. Okay, but you're going based on. I think she did it because it all happens off camera. We don't actually see like who. It's just it's an insert shot of somebody putting the uh, the covering up the photo. Right, but we've got this photo of this little girl, and we get flashbacks of like a little girl handling the samurai sword. Like there's, I don't. Who is she? And there's also when mom is painting. That's when I think his mom becomes possessed at some point as she's painting like the demon takes over her left hand and starts shaking and she grabs the uh, the the brush away from her right hand and starts furiously painting. And it turns out she's painting. I don't know if she painted a samurai because she's imagining a little girl painting. Maybe the little girl paints the samurai. Is the little is, girl her? Is she that's what know, I'm saying. linked with is Sarah? The, is the little girl the mom when she was young? Is that I think so. That's Sean thinks guess. so. Michaela, what do you got? I think so. I don't know. Okay. Because there right. was that I'm other go with that, too. girl that was playing board games randomly with the cat. And what was her role in this movie? Oh, the other daughter? The other daughter. Yeah. Or the, or the daughter, I mean. The daughter? Yeah. For a third act uh, power surge. <laughs> there's, there's, two, there's two younger girls in this movie that I don't know what their roles are. There's just the one. Well, the uh, dollies is the one to is to hide in the closet and scream for ten minutes, mm-hmm. which that alone made me hate the middle part of this movie. Yeah, yeah. I do love the authentic hangout, uh, you know, um, lifestyle that this movie captures of the uh, wild Wisconsin Wisconsinian. Mon- yeah, Monopoly on the red shag carpeting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, watching yeah. TV, your mom reading and the kids playing a board game. Yeah. Yeah. And dad like just kind of takes a cushion off the couch and plops it down on the uh the wall and sits on yep. the floor with his headphones on and watches his tiny 13 inch tube TV. Um Hell yeah. Because that's how it's done. I mean that's how I do it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh yeah. So this there's then we get introduced to like the randos, right? Which you got to have in a movie called Blood Beat. Blood Beat because on the soundtrack we hear the escalating beat of a heart every time the the samurai killer who breathes like Darth Vader is about to strike. Um, so the first is that why? I don't. Know. Mm-hmm. I'm because he's getting here. Uh, he's obviously getting horny. <laughs> I didn't even notice that until you said it just now. So you didn't. Oh. I got the Darth Vader breathing, but I didn't. Oh, I've got I've got a subwoofer. Beat. So I was getting the. Th- yeah, there was a lot in this movie that I couldn't hear. A yeah. lot. <laughs> yeah, awful, the awful the sound, mixing. sound mix. Yeah, the sound mix on this movie absolutely sucks. That's yeah. everyone sounded like they were in the next room. Yeah, they very well could have explained who the little girl in the photo was, but I didn't hear pretty much ninety percent of what the mom said in this movie. No. Yeah, all the dialogues at, at negative, and all the ah, that's all hyped <laughs> up, and I like I couldn't turn my I couldn't turn my TV up to hear the dialogue. Because then the sex and the violence would come in, yeah. and the neighbors are going to think I'm weird. Yeah, the yeah. S- the sound is. Uh, it sounds like the <laughs> whole thing's underwater. Think you're weird, Sean. That's I mean, they, they're. I mean, I live with witches. I've told you this story, so <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how weird I am compared to them. Well, the sound. Cool, it sounds like the, the, uh, the Kim McHale and I were talking about. By the way. Ah. Uh, well, I was going to say, it sounds like the whole movie soundtrack is underwater, like it's wild, you know, like with like a boom mic or something. They didn't actually mic anybody up. And yeah. some of this could be like, you know, somebody trying to EQ the thing, you know, because the print looks like it's damaged, whatever they were able to get, you know, there's like watermarks and stuff on it. So it's like, that's kind of a repair job. But just to finish this thought, right, about the little girl, this does play into the end of the movie because uh, Sarah um when she becomes possessed by the samurai finally and fully in the last 10 minutes of the movie uh is seen x-men style putting her hand over the 
um, photo and causing it to burn. Is it her photo or is it the samurai burning someone, uh, you know, of, um, of great offense to the Japanese for the World War II deaths? I can't. Wasn't it a picture of a little girl, though? That. Yeah. So but that's why I'm like, who is it? Is it Sarah yeah. destroying herself? Why would her picture be in the house? Is it mom? Uh, then, uh, you know, is it the, the eternal fight? Or was it the, the Japanese? We or, don't know. Or was it the other kid, the other little the daughter or whatever? Was it a picture of her? Of Dolly? I don't, yeah, I don't think Dolly has playing board much, games. much to do with this. Well, Dolly, Dolly is end. Gary's. Is it Gary's house or is it mom's house? See, what do we do? Fuck. See, mom's just, house. There's shit leaking out of my ears right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's my brain. My brain is melting. Is it, it's coming out of my ears. Is it, is it, you'll is be it running blue? out my nose. Uh, <laughs> the blue brain. What are we is going after? Blue light uh, surrounding. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, this uh, the effect that they put on this guy. Well, first of all, he kills these random people um, in well, like one of the you know. Well, I mean, it's this domestic situation that's, you know, cranked up to 11. There's uh, some guy who has like a hunter's uh, robe on, hunter robe, hunter jacket in his bed with a cap on, telling his. Is there such thing as a hunter robe? It's a buffalo plaid robe. There you go. Buffalo plaid. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, God. We're so uh, angry. Like I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This guy's the, guy the best character in the movie, though. Because he's laying, he's laying there with his dog and he's just telling his wife, like, get me coffee. Oh, fine. I'll hey, get you coffee. Orange juice. Colin, orange there's juice. more to it than that. He's spooning his dog and then holding his newspaper, like trying to read it while he spoons with his dog. And there's a tea set at his feet on the on the bed. Yeah, she brings on, a on, a, bed. on a water bed. On a water bed. <laughs> on a water bed. I this got guy is naturally the- happy to see a water bed on as soon as she movie. Put, as- as soon as she put that tea tray down on a water bed, I was like, <laughs> with the wow. giant dog on the bed too. I was like, oh my god! Like the dog's gonna put a hole in the water bed and then knock the tea tray on the ground. It's gonna be a whole thing. Oh, uh, remember she, water beds? How insane we used to be! Yeah. I totally had a water bed. Yeah, I used to have one too. <laughs> yeah, it, I got rid of it. Did, did it. They they all came in that like solid oak wood framing, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. how they came. Big, yeah. Heavy yeah. ass frame. It took up like yep. my entire room because I was a kid oh, in yeah. a small room, but I had a giant ass bed. I got rid yep. of mine because when I moved out for the first time, no apartment would let me move in with it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mine, mine broke. Yeah, mine they gotta be, you know, did, do all of them break? Is that the like, the end yeah. story yeah. of the the water bed? All I of think them? so. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but man, <laughs> there's nothing. All right, like, back to the Japanese. Yeah. What, what so was the anyway, line the, from the uh, wife Pieces? Is in the kitchen making tang. <laughs> the what? <laughs> yeah, right. She's in the kitchen making tang. Yeah. And she gets killed. And she gets stabbed. Oh, this is our first. Uh, we still, I think at this point, we still have not seen the samurai. Yeah, now we see the sword. Impaled, run through. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she gets run through. Oh. And yes, then what's Sarah uh, oh. had, shrieks orgasmically in her bedroom. Right. This is their sexual connection at this point. So and we're seeing then, a lot uh, of that. Yeah. And then uh, uh, the dude gets chased to the, I think, the door of the house. For and a then long he gets time. Uh, After arrowed. he throws himself to escape his own house, he throws himself out of a window. Yeah. Let's see. Come on. Which there's was, a fucking killer samurai coming at you. I mean, that's I agree with his methods. Uh, that was apparently the director <laughs> uh, substituting in uh, stunting f- at that point. The director threw himself through a window onto the ground. Oh, really? Uh, dedication. Never dedication. ask anyone to do something that you wouldn't be willing to do yourself. Very true. Exactly. Um, oh, yeah. And Uncle Phil, he gets killed, right? There's another uh, family member who has a car crash, and then we see something attacking him at that point. We don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> Uncle Bigfoot, Phil, is the best it driver in Wisconsin? <laughs> yeah um i know listener you're listening to this going like i don't know what the fuck they're talking about neither do we neither do nope. we nope. um the uh but then all all hell breaks loose at the the farmhouse at this point once uh the dead dude shows up on the door um, yeah it's like some poltergeist shit like the whole house is like this blue aura everything's shaking there's shit flying through the kitchen um, it's bags of flour and shit. Gary gets I pelted almost to death by cans of almost cream corn. Like crackers almost took that man out. Yeah, death mm. by saltines. Um, 
I never thought I'd make this comparison, but it's just like that scene in Logan, uh, where, where <laughs> Professor X, <laughs> Professor X is having a seizure, and everyone around them, everything's shaking. Everyone around them can't move. They're all holding their heads, and they gotta yeah. try and make it to the source to stop it. It's actually that is just where the, like that scene. That is where the comparison ends. Let's be clear. Yes. <laughs> How dare yes. you, Sean? Take that. I'm down. so sorry. <laughs> I see what I see. That's it. The movie's a goddamn masterpiece, Sean. <laughs> it is. Well, who and knows? So we know maybe, where it was inspired. Maybe, maybe Bloodbeat is too. <laughs> maybe by the time we get to the end of this review, we'll be all recommending. Um, you take that back, huh? You take that back. Um, um, more mouth. <laughs> well, so all this crazy shit starts happening. The uh, the demon uh, samurai warrior presents himself. Only we never really get a good look at him at this point in the film because he's. Uh, haloed by this blue glow that has laser sounds because this is the 1980s lasers pew, 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 whenever he does anything yeah uh he traps a couple of them in a uh closet um they scream mom begins to bargain who are you and all this other stuff and you're like does she have a connection and by, with it Do and we- by this time she's got the body glow too like yeah i think this is about the time when i was just like i can't process this anymore Mm -hmm. uh, yeah this is about the time where i got pissed off for like just let's go yeah let's let's just keep going yeah it does keep going this is a brisk 87 minute movie 85 minute 87 yep yeah 87 yeah so what's um i don't know i mean the uh so what yeah, I don't what even, feels like <laughs> yeah what feels like the end of the movie is leaves us with about 35 minutes left why does it feel like it's the end of the movie though it, it, it feels she's like, like she's all like you won't take me or my family Which right like, you shall you. not pass yeah exactly she's all gandalf in it with her with her glowy hands and the thing just stops it just stops and like okay well maybe she's got the power and she can tell it to stop and you know end of movie we're good to go no not end of movie we're not good to go yeah she's got the power. that's right i remember her because it speaks to her not in japanese but in some kind of like uh it's not Gollum English. What? It's like some f- super filtered, warbly, high pitched, high pitched. Yeah. You know, which I couldn't understand. I didn't get anything until the last part, where it's like, "You can't do that to me," or whatever it was saying. Yeah. That's the only part I heard. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Which? Yeah. Oh, there's also there's another. Um, after this, I think it was after this, right? The trauma at the house where people are dying. I think maybe even it was that night. After the poltergeist activity, it seems yeah. to cease. Um, uh, the son goes into the room with his girlfriend, Sarah, and she's asleep and wakes yeah. her up so they can make hot, passionate love, during which uh, we are intercutting another slash and stock scene where there's these three hunters that are out around mm. a fire. These guys are the most like... I mean, laziest actors i've ever seen <laughs> they're just kind of sitting I did here. Get a, it's like i got a chuckle out of this scene because you're like <laughs> when the guy walks guys? over and falls down like oh and they just the kind of look at him the one, like, that oh. stand, the one that stands up and takes the log from the fire and like swings it and his face never yeah. changes he looks like he's yeah. just like picking up towels to fold them like i appreciated his verve though that he was going to try and take on a guy who comes out of the dark dressed in samurai or- armor with his with a samurai sword you're gonna yeah clearly hit him fearless with a clearly. flaming log from the fire that you have yeah. that's right fearless that guy had the samurai fortitude yes he had this within him yeah yep but not good enough to take down the samurai who kills him each one of these we cut back to orgasm uh from uh sarah um See, I don't. I can't explain that. I don't understand what the hell. Like what? Like what are they getting at? You know, what's the greater connection to any of this? I don't know because then you know the next day when we think like, okay, the the samurai thing has gone away, end of the movie. But nope, Sarah all of a sudden has her face all painted in kabuki white makeup, and right. she is now possessed by the samurai she actually puts the armor on. oh they, that's right because uh gary does uh chop the samurai in half as it comes into the woods after him 
right? right. And there's no one in the armor. And he takes the armor back. And like, burn it, burn it. No, I got it's too important. I got to take it to the police. Uh, Gary. Yeah. When Gary. she, when the mom just like pops her head out to just be like, just burn it, burn it. And then goes back in the room. I mean, there's a few acting choices that <laughs> got a chuckle for me. <laughs> Not too much, but there's just somewhere just like, oh, yeah, dad, burn it. It's evil. Just like, yeah. oh, boy. I know when Dolly agrees, I mean, you should do it, right? That's uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Everybody's Dolly saying, would know. Trust Dolly. Yeah. Does Dolly have some kind of uh, magical psychic powers too? That's what we're saying. It's like this is a whole family all, full of like psychics. Yeah. This is a big ask, I think. In, like, yeah. here. <laughs> right? Because I'm sure, like, yes. is she a witch? Like, mom, is she a witch? Witch painter? Witch wizard? Witch paint? painter. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Witch We've painter? had witch from the makers of Witchboard. Now, witch painter. Yeah. There you go, Colin. And then, you know, then another, this other witch like comes into her, into her house. She's like, Ooh, I know you. I've known you somewhere right? before. We're not going to explain where does she recognize her as the samurai was I here. Recognize you go. You from world war two. That's right. That, that's what it is. Because mom is the little girl who was painting and played with the samurai or armor real or not. When she was a kid, because she has psychic visions, right? She oh. recognizes the samurai and she's like, Sarah it. coming in is the samurai. Her her dad killed a samurai. I'll bet that's what happened in the war, and they it, kept the armor. Uh, They're not I mean, sa- war, samurai in nineteen thirty or forty. Yeah, Japan my or grandfather. <laughs> my understanding is that samurais kind of stopped being a thing in like the twenties. Okay, all right. Well, then there there you go. World War One. No, I have no. Um, okay, so yeah, and, uh, it, and it could have it could have been. I mean, if, if it's the eighties, if she was. A little girl in the forties, and she's like a mom and of a her, grown man. Like it makes sense as far as age wise. Oh my that god! It's her dad. But right? why? Why would a samurai be wanting vengeance on something that came after them if it predates like World War? Oh yeah, because they. Oh yeah, I forgot they flashed. That doesn't World War make II. any sense. Oh, okay, yeah, never no, mind. There no goes the window. That makes sense. I'm saying the World War II timeline can happen. That makes sense. All right. We tried. That's it. That's as much as we can do. We tried one theory. We're not going to do it. I was genuinely impressed by that. I'm sitting there going like, oh, okay, we're actually going to pull something together out of this. Right. But, Thanks uh, a lot, Michaela. We had it going in there. Like, hey, guys, World War II. Don't forget about World War II. Yeah, it, do- it doesn't work. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. Damn Just- you and your samurai knowledge. Does a movie have to work? I mean, what do you what 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 are you considering your uh like? What you gotta you, buy, I mean, you got to at least maybe, buy the premise. Maybe it's someone who's like really obsessed with samurai culture from the World War II era. You, maybe you what are you saying? The you filmmaker stop. or a character in the movie? What, what are we going with here? I know. I mean, like in the movie, you know how like we have people like nowadays that are really obsessed with you know, the fifties and they dress with like the pompadour and all that stuff. Cause they're just obsessed with the culture. Maybe it's like that, but it's a sam. but it's a person obsessed with samurais in world war two. Just go with me. Okay, I like so it. We can I'm on. just trying to figure <laughs> out where the suit comes into all this that they had in the trunk, you know, maybe but, their grandpa was a samurai. They, they're like, obsessed they with killed, samurai. they killed a samurai cosplayer, took his armor. But it's not even established. That it's, revenge even, of the nerds. it's not even established that there was a, a real samurai trunk. That could have been a ghost trunk with a ghost yeah. samurai armor in ghost it. That only appeared to Sarah because everybody comes up there and they're like, there's no trunk in this room, Sarah. Well, this there makes it no... right for sequels. If that trunk yeah. can just show up anywhere. <laughs> you shut your horn up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sarah eventually does put on the samurai or armor and goes through the house, hacking and slashing up her family. Um, Mostly, yeah. Is it before or after she chases with the predator vision? She chases Dolly through the woods. Yeah, no, that was that's what right. ended with Gary slashing the the thing. So now we're back in the house. Yeah. Sarah's possessed, um, turning colors, and stabs mom. Even though mom's right. like, you can't do it. You're not going to be able to do it. And the lamest chase scene down a hallway, possibly ever captured on film. Um, There's a lot of lame chasing in this movie. Yeah. Very true. And uh, it seems to me, if I remember correctly, Dolly, when she right. comes in the room, because we got we got okay. a close up. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's some kind of the, the, uh, the, 
magical Carmina Burana music is so overpowering uh, that Gary can't. It's like a force field is created by a musical force field, a sonic force field. He can't get through. Right. And he tries to come in there and stab the samurai. But does he notice that it's that it's Sarah and he can't do it? I don't know. But he gets thrown like against that, the wall. I like that you're now assuming our characters can hear the soundtrack. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, uh, yeah. I think so. I think it's coming from the samurai. It could, it could be. It could be right. It's the ghost music. Uh, so there's nothing to say it's not Holly. Are, are you telling me that the samurai is the ghost of Carl Orff, the composer of the music? Yes. Is that what you're telling me? I would yeah, buy into that. Japanese. Role. Yeah. I'd be more willing to get on board with that. All right, that's what we're going with. All right. So Carl Orff's, Orff's ghost now possessing yep. this woman. Uh, and, uh, so Gary's been thumped against the wall and Tim, the boyfriend is in Ted. horror. Is he dead? Who's the no, one who's Ted. Oh, Ted. Oh, Ted, sorry. <laughs> Ted recoiling. Ted, not dead. <laughs> I'm Ted. <laughs> I'm Ted. I'm Ted. I'm Ted. I'm Ted. I'm Ted. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> so all right are we done with this movie <laughs> uh almost i think right because okay yeah. so but dolly has uh, superpowers as well she comes in and takes ted's hand and together they form uh like it's some kind fucking of wonder twins apparently <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, they, like it's the it's opposing like the power of the galaxy yeah, that's exactly yeah, whole it. Hand. It yeah. is. Wow. See, see how many, how much influence this movie has had on Hollywood. <laughs> Specifically we're, Marvel. We're like the only people. Specifically who've seen Marvel. This movie. <laughs> um, we're going to get letters from people who have actually watched it, but uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm convinced that. I like, would like to know if anyone oh, has please watched do. this. Said Sean's weird friend. Please. Yeah, we're on an island. I think <laughs> 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 the people have seen Blood Beat. Uh, or in a, yeah. we're now in an exclusive club, but that's why we do this, I right? So. Because <laughs> you want to go seek out. Right, where else are you going to even hear about this movie? Yeah. Um, so how do they defeat? Uh, take us home, Sean. How do we defeat the evil samurai ghost uh, at the end of the movie? Well, they wonder twins, the samurai, and I mean, we just watched it. And I forgot. That's okay. Michaela's what got happens? it. No, I re- Wonder Twins is the last thing I remember. Holly's got what it. <laughs> uh, I I feel like that's what it was. They Wonder Twins, a samurai, and it disappeared, and they walked outside, and the credits rolled. Okay, I don't remember that either. It? I remember the Wonder I Twins. Think that's what happened? <laughs> <laughs> that, that might be it. Oh, I think that's my it. God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, well, I can't remember. Does the armor disappear? Does it glow something? He doesn't explode or go on fire or anything. I I don't recall. I think we just go with we don't remember. Yeah, I think it cares. Yeah, I think it glows and then disintegrates. There you go. And poor Sarah goes with it. So she's not saved. We don't know for sure why she has this link with the armor. So many questions are unanswered at the uh, end of this movie. I'm going to venture to say all of them. The mom dies. Yeah. He gets stabbed, right? Is Gary okay? Where's Gary? He's knocked out on the floor. I think he's still alive. In the okay. th- right, because he came in with the knife and then got thrown back. But so maybe he's dead. Gary? Yeah, they just right. leave him. Right? You Wait. figure they're the the two survivors of the movie are coming out of the house at the end. Uh, so Gary must be dead. I'm gonna go with Where's he's dead. Gary? Dead. The cat's dead. Everybody's dead. The Everybody's cat's dead? dead. Yeah. All dead. They would have. If, if they were alive, they would have came out at the end of the movie, and only the two of them did. Well, that's another cat that died in the movie Sean picked this year. Then, I'm so sorry. Yeah, and the deer. I think that's it. I, 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 maybe it, I, you know, for for reference, a deer runs by as we fade to black. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's how it ends. It's like the departed ending, the rat. <laughs> All right, so we're giving up on this. That's what we're saying. Yeah, this I movie, think so. This movie, I think you're going to compare this to. I broke. gave up on this movie a long time ago, Colin. Yeah, <laughs> I think we're done. <laughs> okay, well, uh, that's okay. We still have uh, a lot of show left for you because we got a, a lot of email, or sorry, we got a lot of mailbag tonight, so uh, we're just going to go with that. Uh, yeah. So, for, <laughs> so to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, Igor, and bring us the mail. 
Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail! So many letters, our followers are rising, rising. Bye. Thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. We should get him a samurai suit. Mm. Yeah, he for does. He does love Ninja Turtles three. It yeah. is his favorite movie. Turtles in time. We'll, we'll get him a little known fact for everybody. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, then just wrap it. <laughs> Colin's in. like, "Yep, yeah, okay." Sure. Uh, well, we want to remind you how you can get a hold of us uh, to participate. Write in, and Igor will bring us your mail. You can write in on Facebook, Facebook dot com slash Saturday Freak Show, Twitter at Sad Freak Show, email Saturday Freak Show at Yahoo dot com, or Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Well, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, wants us to know. And wish us a happy freak anniversary Saturday Night Freak Show. He says, eight years Aww. ago, you welcomed us down into the dank, dark basement to listen to as you waxed poetic and shot the shit about your favorite movies, and we haven't stopped listening since. Aww. We did. Uh, I think we we did our own little reminiscing reminiscing on the chat. I think after this, kind of figure mm-hmm. out when we first came into this and 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 how uh, what our first episodes and, were yeah and how we yeah. finagled our way onto the podcast yeah eight Aww. years that culminates Aww. with the showing of blood beat about tonight's movie <laughs> michael yeah, whitaker we're all gonna die after this one <laughs> <laughs> michael whitaker <laughs> writes in and says ah the christmas samurai horror movie that old chestnut uh amos martinez says i just finished watching this for the first time and i have to say it was definitely unique this was one of the most bizarre things i've witnessed in quite some time but i must have enjoyed it considering i ordered the blu-ray before it was even finished what wow that's a bold move to order before you even finish i wish i had that kind of money is bold the right word uh (laughs) outloa says oh man first night killer and now this you guys are really on a roll with these weird and wonderful movies and sean is right this is totally a christmas movie keep up the good work you freaks <laughs> greetings from the, the netherlands it is weird oh, hello hello netherlands oh hello netherlands maybe Love maybe it. this maybe this makes mo- movie make sense in the netherlands just not here so it should have been no, set he's in French. the Netherlands and not Sean, Wisconsin. The director. I think the Netherlands, I think the, the I think they understand the movie. Like something clicks for them that does not click for us. It's probably, maybe. probably the neighbor. French. If song. we don't understand it, there is no understanding. Yeah. It. The director, maybe. what was the director's name? He's a French guy, right? Making movies in Wisconsin. Yes, so, he's French. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> about last week's movie, which was The Curse of Frankenstein, Simon Carter writes in and says, You bastards i'm drunk right now and weirdly emotional emotional about hammer the building that was home to hammer for many years has recently been pulled down it was really sad to pass it and see the scaffolding and construction machinery destroying bray studios it was a pretty cool site the building was on the banks of the river thames and kind of copied the california style having columns and art deco art deco styling it definitely stood out but was cool for a movie nerd like me anyway i'm sure it'll make for a great episode oh that's kind of sad a oh, piece oh. of horror history yeah. cool yeah. so is it things like that that are listening yeah. now yeah. Is that yeah. the Oakley Court? Oakley Court, though, is still standing, right, Simon? I think that's a hotel or something. Or did they tear that down, too? You let us know. Uh, Jacob Laws says uh, Christopher Lee is awesome. He's in Curse of Frankenstein, obviously. He says he was a British Special Forces soldier in World War II. His cousin, his cousin was Ian Fleming and uh, an inspiration in the creation of James Bond. He pretty much did everything didn't he yeah if you don't know about christopher lee's backstory read it because he that dude was awesome yeah you got to go uh oh. check out what when, when did we really talk about christopher lee was it dracula ad 1972 i can't remember because he's like a metal singer too if you in at like 80 years old christopher lee making heavy metal holiday albums mm-hmm. he was a badass in so many ways yeah mm-hmm. he's a jedi life and a, yeah and a jedi uh <laughs> nelson nascimento writes in and says i always liked hazel court uh from curse of frankenstein in the man who could cheat death too that's like uh 
It's another Hammer horror movie. It's kind of like a picture of Dorian Gray know? and uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde put together. She was also in The Raven. We didn't mention that. The Peter Lorre and uh, Vincent Price, Boris Karloff movie. Uh, Peter Gatt says, let's take a vote. When you think of Peter Cushing, what role comes to mind first, Baron Frankenstein or Professor Van Helsing? Tarkin. Oh, I know. I was like, oh, that was the only two options because mine's Tarkin. <laughs> I think mine would still be Van Helsing. I like the other ones better, but I still think of him as Van Helsing. Okay. Yeah, I think now I see him as Baron Frankenstein, but I think, yeah, Tarkin is probably, but between those two, I think now I've seen more of the, uh, yeah, Frankenstein. For the previous week, we watched a movie called Fire in the Sky. Jonathan Holt says, between Colin's comment about Igor's pus straw back in the Manitou episode and this week's meat jelly comment, if you guys go for the hat trick, I might actually vomit in my car on the way to work. Love you guys. <laughs> I mean, those are two really gross movies. We're just calling it like we see it, man. That's yeah. true. Yeah, you go. You got really disgusting in that episode, Kyle. <laughs> you were really going for it. <laughs> uh, I'm glad it worked. Travis Legler writes in and says, when you guys started talking about Mel Torme, I had to laugh. I just remember the judge, Harry T. Stone, on Night Court loving him and that Mel Torme would appear on the show from time to time. Man, I want to watch some Night Court right now. Night Court. Uh, there you go. I don't know that I've ever watched Night Court, but... Okay. It's interesting. Uh, Lisa was a Harry Anderson, right? Richard Mall. You remember with the, no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Lisa Padgett says, I really enjoyed the talk about male actors from the nineties. There are some really good ones that seem to have just disappeared. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Like yeah. Craig where did Shuffer. they go? Craig Sheffer gone. Probably. To well, they'll come back for, they'll come back oh, for these nostalgia shows now. They do. And a lot of them show up in like Hallmark and Lifetime movies. A lot of them. Which honestly is why I watch them. <laughs> <laughs> if you stick around long enough, Riverdale will hire, hire you to play some kid's dad. So that's true, right? And that's I'm true. convinced. And I'm convinced Cobra Kai is just lifetime for dudes. Mm -hmm. I like it, it too. It, it basically, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, but it's it's got those elements that you love, but they're making it for us. I think. Yeah, I love Cobra for, Kai. To get to, it's it's great. Mm -hmm. Well, G Money Wonderful. says. Let's just uh, talk. Can we just talk about Cobra Kai instead of this movie? We're gonna erase this shit. Patreon, Patreon End episode, episode, Sean. Yeah. That's right. Don't End give me anything away. Uh, okay. G Money says uh, altered. The movie altered from the co-director of the Blair Witch Project is a gem that's right up there. But the roles are flipped with the alien extraterrestrial being the one held captive. It's fun to watch. Interesting. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, Grant Parrish echoed our sentiments and said yeah sean never get out of the truck <laughs> i'm sorry i'm i'm a kid at heart and sometimes they just be like "Ooh, shiny lights and i get out and i wander away yeah well bill hayner says the aliens in fire in the sky look like hillbilly aliens from jebulon pat noek <laughs> said they look like groot which i think is what we said on the actual show and yeah. happy yes. l said the examination table sequence is freaky it's horrifying. Yeah, that's stressful. That's right. It gave Holly nightmares. She was unable mm -hmm. to sleep for a week after that movie. Mm -hmm. uh, the previous week, we watched a movie called, oh no, sorry, it was a couple weeks ago, of unknown origin. Bevan Dedabant Ventura said, after Peter Weller killed that rat, I was waiting for his wife to come home, see the dead rat, and just casually say, well, at least we know it's for dinner. <laughs> That would have been I a mean, good like end of that movie. That's yeah. a better that's, if John that's Hughes would have directed ending. it. Yeah, that would have been the yeah. Chris Columbus ending. Oh yeah, it seems like a very '90s ending. Yeah, at least I would have laughed. It would have given me. We did, to but me. <laughs> that's the joke we made in the chat when uh, at the end of that movie we made a Kevin. What did you do to my room? Yeah, joke. Yeah, yeah but that, there you go. So it is. Yeah. Kevin gave it to there us. There it is. Uh, we'll, we'll send you a special medal in the mail. Uh, so, uh, about uh, a long it's time a ago, we watched a movie called Waxwork. Pat Hetfield just listened to our episode and said, uh, another thing about director Anthony Hickox is his father is Doug Hickla Hickox, who directed Theater of Blood, which is a good horror movie slash black comedy starring Vincent Price. In fact, I remember reading in Fangoria that the only reason the father directed Theater of Blood is because Anthony Hickox loved horror movies and wanted his father to make it so there you go that's right if you so stick cool. stick with the I saturday night freak show long enough one. you'll find out all this stuff about even movies that we yes. talked about a while ago yeah um never stop learning 
And Pat also <laughs> had some suggestions for us. So we want to remind you, go on over to our social media and leave us a couple suggestions for our listeners choice month. Now we're going to go around the room and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie blood beat starting with holly <laughs> holly is going first tonight holly what did you think oh. about tonight's movie M- movie quote unquote blood beat um well tonight's experimental student film um yeah i i mean we've we've made no secret that this movie sucked and it was confusing as all hell and and pretty much, and despite sounding cool in parts when we say like there's like a ghost samurai and demon possession and psychic abilities, it's not as cool as that sounds. That is yeah. that is very misleading. Very misleading. No, go watch Go watch Ninja Three if you have yeah, any yeah. desire to <laughs> watch anything that sounds cool about this. Go watch Ninja Three. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's at least that a is, canon. That is a great movie. point. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That is a great point. Um, yeah, no, there's nothing redeeming about this movie. For 87 minutes, it felt long as fuck. Every everything in this movie took way too long, way, way, way too long. Um, I, I think this could have been like a 30 minute segment if they had cut everything that they should. Yeah, have. this is a anthology. Yeah, part like part three or two or something. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like with a better director this storyline could have actually been adapted into an entertaining anthology piece, but unfortunately that's not what we got. We got a really weird, uh, hot, a really weird hodgepodge of just insanity. And yeah, I couldn't follow it. I didn't like it. It was, it, it genuinely irritated me watching this movie. Um, yeah, I can't recommend anything about it. So hard 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 pass on this movie no thank you no one should watch it um yeah no Michaela what do you think I appreciate the representation of Wisconsin I think that <laughs> yeah, interesting <laughs> aspect like not yeah, a lot so of this movies episode are made is brought Wisconsin. to you by the state of Wisconsin <laughs> yeah represent <laughs> well <laughs> not a lot of movies are made in Wisconsin and not a lot of them are about like rural Wisconsin especially so like the first now we know why that was the first 20 minutes i was like this feels familiar like i can kind of relate to this like right i was like i want to kill myself right now i think this is about wisconsin well, i like, like wisconsin. yeah i like oh, wisconsin oh, i'm sorry too. i'm sorry I li- there's a lot of things <laughs> yeah, i like about wisconsin and like i don't know to me like be like having family from wisconsin and stuff like the idea of coming like to someone's house for the holidays and like someone's cleaning a deer and all that stuff like that was all very familiar to me so mm-hmm. um that i was like okay i can get on board with this and like I could tell it actually was Wisconsin too. Like yeah. right away. I was like, that is definitely actual Wisconsin. Um, so that's cool. Uh, that being said, <laughs> I was not entertained by any aspect of this movie beyond that. Uh, longest 87 minutes I've watched in a very long time. Um, before we got in the air, we were talking about how we're doing like our end of the year research right now. And I've watched a lot of bad movies uh, that have come out in 2020 and watching bad ones for the freak show in the middle of that is not helping. <laughs> Um, (laughs) my patience is wearing very thin for movies like this. And yeah, I agree with what Holly said. Like if, if it sounds like a part we were describing was cool, like it's really not how you're picturing it in your head. It's really not like that. And it's too bad because like, it could be an awesomely bad movie, but it's just, there's no plot. There's no, there's no nothing. There's nothing is defined in this movie at all. And in the chat, we just kept saying like, what is happening? What is happening? But also like, why is anything happening? There's no reason mm-hmm. for any of this to be happening. Yeah, this movie is totally devoid of any logic. Yeah, like, and it's any. it's and when you don't know why anything is happening or what's happening, there's not re- you don't really care. So there, mm-hmm. there was no stakes because I don't know why it's happening in the first place. Um, and I don't know who these people are or anything. And it takes so long in 87 minutes to get to any of the action. It's like the last 20 minutes of the movie, and it. Yeah, it's just there's nothing worth checking out here. Um, we this is too much vinegar syndrome failure lately. We really need to like if we're gonna keep watching their trash, they need to start paying us for this because we've watched a lot lately. <laughs> and Sean, your friend's not allowed to pick movies anymore. That, that's, no, that's very true. This that's, is twice what is, I mean, really close again, together. Again, it all I am the final say in what comes on the show, so blame me as much. But yeah, David, I'm, I'm never listening to you again. So yeah, that, that's a hard, hard pass. Uh, Colin, what did you think? 
Well, at least Sean has to screen it. I think that's the thing. If David recommends a movie, Maybe. then you got to watch right. screen it first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know what you're getting into. No, this is, it's a cheap piece of shit movie that, you know, you're going to have people trying to defend it because they're contrarians or they're trying to figure it out, calling it avant-garde or experimental or something mm -hmm. like that. But it's basically some guy with his head so far up his own ass that uh, he thinks he's making something on a great theme, right? which we can't discern what it is. It's like, if you're, this movie doesn't work. I can't tell why people are doing anything that they're doing, what they're thinking about, what they're doing. Uh, any, you know, what relationship this scene has to the one that came before it or the one that's coming after it, you know? And then it's like, well, no, it's just, it's art. You're just supposed to watch art and get a feeling off of it. Right. That's what art, art's subjective. It's in the eye of the beholder. Go fuck yourself. It's a movie. It's supposed to in some ways, but God damn it. You're not going to give it to me. But both Possession and Beyond the Black Rainbow are goddamn masterpieces compared to this movie. <laughs> so I'm going to, I don't get, I'm getting get the side eye. But the, oh, 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 Holly's thinking about it. She's almost like, man, this movie was really bad. Um, so no, she's shaking her head. Okay. Uh, no, I mean, you got to, yeah. I think it was, uh, it's a joke. You know, basically, Shudder said this, uh, whatever, uh, something Christmas gem. Forgotten for you. Like, go with. Yeah. It's the vinegar syndrome marketing like, department. We found this yeah. movie in a bin with the 30 other ones that we bought. There's two that we actually want to put out, but we'll, we'll figure out a way to restore these things painstakingly, which I appreciate. I appreciate they're doing that. But then it's like, well, then, you know, it's like, and we're so hungry for that 80s uh magic right that now they're basically yeah. taking shit that fell through the cracks there it's like it's like an undiscovered lost 80s movie because they it has don't want to have their miami connection right they're yeah. all hoping that's what's going to happen yeah because you or the blood rage right because i seriously yeah. think like blood rage only became a thing since it was put out by arrow you know i, I mean no one had fucking heard of that goddamn movie before that now it's a you know thanksgiving classic so i think you know everybody's looking for the next one of those so to do that because as horror fans, we're like the only group of people who will do this or the only, you know, like yeah. movie fandom who will just keep diving down like because you got to have more. It's like you got to have a fix. So you you keep on going like, you know, show me what's next. Show me what's next. I'll decide whether it's good or not. Just, you know, I don't care. Just <laughs> as long as I'm aware that it's there. Let's watch it. This and is Colin talking to himself in yeah. the basement. Well, do you recognize yourself in what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> yes, I, of course okay. I do. Of so, course I do. Okay. So I'm not that far <laughs> off then. Um, I just don't have a basement. Yeah. Stay away from this movie, Sean. Uh, <laughs> as a recommendation to you, I'm having just experienced it myself. I'm going to save you the pain of having to go through a uh, blood beat and uh, go watch something else. That's uh better and that could be damn near any other movie uh that you uh that you find uh anywhere so i guess that's that's four people <laughs> saying no to uh, and we're the sane ones that's what it comes down to everybody's you know if they're gonna go and defend the four stars look at those people with uh kind of a sideways glance well, we still have to see what Sean thinks. <laughs> oh, that's right. Sorry. sorry. I just assumed. That's true. Yeah, you're right. I thought you went first. I'm sorry. It Look doesn't at it. all end this with you, Colin. This is the fucking show, the movie that broke the Saturday Night Freak Show. Sean, what would you think? It really is. We, 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 we fucking, I, we gave up on this movie. We got to the end and, and our, uh, in our discussion and we were just like, I don't know. I think it ended. Maybe it's still on somewhere. I don't know. Um, we live in a wonderful time, uh, I think. Um in that we have so many, uh, there's so many boutique um, movie umbrellas out there now who are finding things that we would have otherwise otherwise not heard about, restoring them, and at times giving us such classics as uh, Blood Rage. Um, but there is an argument for certain movies being lost to time, I think, and that argument is Blood Beat. Um, I don't understand why anybody would, I get that, We've seen some weird shit that's been restored before, but this one really like I got question marks popping up. I'm like, was this kinda, really it worth baffles, it? Kind of baffles me that people spent time restoring this. <laughs> right. This is one I can't see it being worth the final product to take the time to restore this movie. Yeah, but you don't uh, know I, what it is until you see it. So you got to buy somehow. Well, like, I know. Yeah. 
So but, they win. They I mean, win. Uh, but, but I, well, <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. Um, I, I can't imagine sitting down seeing this and like, yeah, we should restore this. And I mean, but again, I think Colin, you're right. We need out there. We need another, we need another fix. And now everyone's like, Oh, uh, uh arrow video, uh, is re-releasing this after being lost for 30 years. It must be something. And then, you know, we get, well, you can end up with shit like this. Um, I got mad at this movie most of the way through when the mom starts having her first like spiritual talking to with the samurai in the middle of the living room. I just, it's so, it's very boring. And that is, uh, it's one of the greatest faults you can have as a movie. Um, I did not like this. I'm very sorry for bringing it. Um, man, I gotta, I can take a look at my life choices because I'm just, it just, we're going to have a full t-shirt full of movies that I've made you guys sit through that have become t-shirts. And that's maybe not a goal I want for this show. So I will be looking at myself in the new year. <laughs> and uh, I will be. I vow, to make, I vow to make better decisions for my and your future. <laughs> Until then, do not, <laughs> on any level, watch Blood Beat. Listeners, this is your chance to hold Sean accountable. You heard him say it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, well, this I, episode, yeah. Public yeah, record, Sean. You can't go. Yeah. You can't go back on it. I know. This is like a rocky episode until we got to mailbag, and then it's gold from there on out, right? So. <laughs> Well, we hope that, uh, I mean, if you stuck with us, you know, Holly, you have some major work to do next week. <laughs> you got to pull us, pull us out of a hole. We're watching something very different next week. Okay. Okay. What's it going to be? What are we watching next week? Next week? Uh, we're watching, we've been talking about watching a good Sasquatch movie for a while. I don't know if it's oh, going to be good, but boy. it's a Sasquatch movie. Oh no. <laughs> we're, we're watching Night Claws. Mike, what the hell Nick is that? <laughs> you might like recognize a, Santa a few Claus people. Pun. You might recognize a few people. It's it. I, I apologize. It's not actually a holiday movie, but well, neither was Colin. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be fine. I think we've had. Did we not get enough holiday movie with this movie we just watched? Uh, maybe, that's true. maybe. Okay, all right. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We're watching Night Claws. What year? What? Yeah. What? What was this made? Just so we could track it down. 2012. 2012's uh, Night Claws. I'm scared. I'm feared. Uh, on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, boils and ghouls, the basement is going dark.